Um, it, it's definitely helpful for the team um, to see everybody, you know, coming back from off the list and uh, getting guys out there uh, running around and just getting back acclimated to the team and uh, back to the playbook. Aaron Wilson. Hey, Desmond. When you, you look at Trey Lance uh, with Jimmy G injured, mm -hmm. how much have you been able to dig into uh, some of the you know, tape on uh, on Trey? And, and what do you think of him as a quarterback? Thank you. Um, you know, we're just, just going to take it, you know, day by day and just be prepared for, you know, who's going to be out there. Um, we know that Jimmy's going to be down. Um, so we got to, you know, dig deep into the uh, film study and see what Trey uh, can give us for the game. Brooks and, and Desmond, I'm I'm curious from um, you know your perspective on John Madden. Um, you know, he passed last night, and um, you know his influence on the game. I'm I'm curious, like what you what your reflections were when you heard about that. Uh, I don't know his what what you yeah. Uh, you know, I have seen it. You know, via social social media, uh, and just seeing that, you know, it's you know it's a very iconic you know person, a legend, you know, to the game of football. Um, someone that 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 made this game fun, and that turned it into a video game. So like everybody that plays the sport knows, you know how much he meant to the game of football. So um, very you know uh, sad about it, uh, and um, just just knowing that you know what he did for the game and for us. What was it? Uh, what was it to you that you knew him as? Was it mostly through the game? I mean, like, what was what was kind of your connection? Oh yeah, you know, I, I'm I'm still young, uh, but uh, I know a little knowledge. You know, him being a you know iconic coach, uh, the Raiders head coach. You know, and just creating, like I said, creating the video game Madden. You know, that's been around for years, and it it, it gives us you know that that spark when we go out there on the field. Like, and then you see yourself in a video game. It's like, dang, like. You see yourself doing it in a video game, so you want to go do it in real life. So that's what it gives me. It gives me that type of feeling. Is it something you play still? Oh, all the time. <laughs> cool. Can't be beat. <laughs> Jasmine, when you look at a guy like Debo Samuel and his versatility to be able to line up in the slot, the perimeter, even in the backfield, how do you best prepare for someone like that and what they're able to do, especially on third down situations? Um, yeah, I mean, we faced multiple guys um, that's that type of caliber. Um, just with Jacksonville, how they had uh, LaVisca, you know, same kind of built type guy. But, you know, Debo is a, a very special person. You know, he's a guy that can have the ball in his hand. He can catch the ball. You know, he's a gadget guy. So, you know, we're going to have to be prepared to, uh, you know, for, for what he got, you know, coming to the table. Cody? Hey, Desmond, what are some of the challenges that goes into preparing for a quarterback like Trey Young when there's so little film on him because he only played, what was it, like a total of like two or three games this season? Um, you know, like I said before, you know, just kind of dig deep into the film study this week and, you know, see what kind of keys we can read off of him um, going into Sunday. Aaron Wilson. Hey, Desmond, what's the feeling like around the building – being on a two-game winning streak, and you know, it's been a long year, but to at the end of the season, to be finishing the season strong, what does it mean to you guys? Um, you know, just, just getting ourselves on the right track, you know, going into the next year, um, and just, you know, putting our best foot forward. You know, we want to still put good film on tape. We want to still go out there, win, and that's the goal each and every week. So that's, I mean, that's, that's our approach, and, you know, we're going to keep doing that. Mark? What do you think about your guy, Tavier, being named AFC Defensive Player of the Week? All he needed was a chance, man, and, and, and he seized it. You know, that's his opportunity to go out there, you know, showcase his talent. You know, we've been talking about it for years, ever since we was littles, and and this was his opportunity. He did it on the, on the main stage. Last one for Brooks. Desmond, I'm curious throughout the year, um, uh, how much I don't know how much you go up against uh, Davis Mills and practice on, on that, yeah. but like, what have you seen from him? I don't know. Is it? Can you like? I don't know. Like, are there things that he's gotten better at that you can say, "Oh, he got me on this" or things like that? He's young. I mean, every every young guy going to go through, you know, um, some some trials and tribulations, some obstacles, and it just 
giving him time to learn and see what he can, you know, do better for himself. And, and I've seen it. You know, we played against him in camp. He's been here for camp preseason. And I can see the the progression that he's made throughout the week, throughout the year. And, um, you know, it, it, it's coming along for him, and I'm proud of it. I think with all rookies, too, like they kind of grow up yeah, and grow yeah. into their personality. Like, what have, how have you seen that grow with him? Um, just, just, you know, watching, you know, how he, you know, walk around the facility, his film studying. Um, I see him in here every morning early, um, either working out, you know, watch a film or just getting his body right in the uh, training room. So that's that's something that you can see, you know, coming from a young guy um, that that's coming, you know, to this team and, and knowing what to do and the, um, the right things to do. Thanks, Des. No problem. How you guys doing? All right, we'll start with Mark. What would you think about being named ASC Defensive Player of the Week? Happy, too happy. Glad it came when it came, when we got a win. So just going to continue to do what I do and go out there and just continue to show people who I am on and off the field. I wouldn't think you could be too happy doing something like that, right? <laughs> yeah, I, when I woke up and I seen it, well, I, I, I kind of knew but yesterday, but when I woke up and actually seen it, it was, like, amazing. So just to see that and see my mom and my family happy and my teammates happy for me and coaches texting me this morning. So it was nice. It was great. Congrats. Thank you. Hey, Tavier, congratulations. Tavier, you tweeted something the other day. You were talking about the Pro Bowl and setting that as a goal for next season. How much does goal setting, even when you just accomplish something, is very important to you to kind of keep setting the bar high? And uh, is that kind of, you know, something that you've tried to do your whole career? Um, yeah, it's something I always wanted to be in. Like, as a special teams guy, I always wanted to go to the Pro Bowl. But we had Slater in the AFC when I was in Cleveland. And he beat me out every year. So that's one of my big goals. And now playing defense, my goal is to be there with Denzel. That's one of my boys, Denzel Ward. And he's going to his second one. Proud of him. So I'm trying to get there with him. And if I can do that, that should be another goal checked off my list. Like you were saying the other day, you've made this a year where you wanted to learn as much as possible from Lovey. Um, what have you picked up from the other coaches, including Dino Vaso? Thank you. Oh, they they help me a lot. They help me out a lot. Like I'm with um, Lovey a lot, but Dino. He's with me as well because I have to play corner if something was to happen. So he'd be on me about that. So I got to be ready to play all positions. And he keeps me right. Dino, he's like a – I love he's like a father figure. Dino's like a big brother and a coach at the same time. So just having those two guys, is, it, it helps me each and every day to become a better player. Brooks. I'm just curious with your uh, um, your thoughts on John Madden and how to, how how did you know about him and like uh, what was kind of your thoughts on his passing? So I knew about him from actually playing the game. So I played well when my mom when we had enough money to actually like get video games and stuff like that. The first game she bought me was Madden. I don't know what made her want me to play football, but all my brothers they're all like six four, six five, and I was always the little one. So she always dressed me in football jerseys and stuff and. For Christmas, once we could afford it, for Christmas, she used to buy me all the Madden games. So I used to play Madden all day long. And just, just to see, like, um, what he's done for the game, it's an amazing. Pray for his family last night when I seen it. So I'm just continue to pray for, for, for his family and just thank you for everything he's done for the game of football. And you said your mom, uh, well, you didn't know why she thought you would be the football player. Yeah. Right? <laughs> I, I had no clue. Playing that game, does... I mean, the imagination kind of comes alive. Did that kind of help you as you were, I don't know, playing and thinking, like, maybe this could be something? Oh, yeah, for sure. Like, when I was playing, I'm like, I just want to do it. Like, when she put it on me, she put it on, you got to play football. So, it's like, I took all my anger out. I like football because I can take my anger out without getting in trouble for it. So, I just went out and played football or whatnot. And, like, I just went to, like, I used to create my player and stuff like that. And just to see myself now actually in the game, it's an amazing feeling. So, I'm just happy. Would you crank it up to 99s and all of that whenever you create it? Oh, all 99s. And I play offense. <laughs> what position? Quarterback. 
I played quarterback in high school. I'm real. I got an arm. You can ask the coaches and the players. I'll be hitting the um, crossbar every Saturday before every game. You and Titus, huh? Me, Titus, um, D. Walk, and who else is it? It's probably just us three. Everybody else, it take them too long to hit it. So, <laughs> one more. Uh, did, do you remember what year Madden that one when she got you? Which one was the, the one? The first one. Um, it was the one with um Ray Lewis on it. I don't know what year that was. But that was the first time I actually had. 2005. Yep, 2005. The hit stick. Uh, yeah. Cody. Hey, Xavier. Um, last week you tweeted that you was going to the Pro Bowl next year. So, you know, with that, with you being snubbed this year, how much are you going to use that as motivation just to continue getting better, especially now since you've been named the player of the week? Um, I don't feel like I've been snubbed because it's a, it's a guy out there that's um, pretty good and Kenny Moore in the AFC. So he's real good. Look up to him. Just learning learning the game from him and the other guys. Um, I'm finally getting my opportunity to play defense, and I just want to continue to show everyone that I can actually do it. So when the opportunity comes next year, I hope they my name be called as the Pro Bowl slot corner. Cool. Hey, Javier, congrats on the award this past week. I'm just wondering, when you look at a guy like Trey Lance and setting film, this will be now the fourth rookie quarterback you guys have faced this season. Have you noticed any inconsistencies with any of the quarterbacks? And just what have you seen on film from him just in the very minimal amount of snaps he's played? Um, like I said yesterday, he's top top three picks in the NFL draft. So we got we know what he can do. Like, he probably hasn't played a lot because he's behind a veteran. But when you're that top that top guy in the draft, they know that we know that you're good. So just got to go out there and just try to pick up a little bit of keys that we could play off of and just go from there and just, just go out and play. Read our keys and play hard. Last one for Mark. Javier, you should know that Desmond told all of us on Zoom here that he can't be beat in Madden. We play every other day because he always sleep or doing something when I want to play. So he called me in the middle of the night and stuff and play. And I beat him. When we play for money, I win. When he play for fun, he win because there ain't no, it's nothing to, like, you feel me? <laughs> he ain't ready for me, though. He's scared to play for money. He only want to play for fun, play for pride, trying to post me on social media. So today when I get home, I'm going straight home and play Madden and I'm going to beat him. Thanks, Tommy. Sounds, sounds like a prediction. Oh, yeah, I'm going to win. Um, prediction, I would say 28-14. Um, <laughs> Thanks, guys. All right, thank you. Hey, Davis. What's it going to be like for you to go back to the Bay Area where you played your college ball and play against the 49ers? Do you think it'll obviously you approach every game with the same importance, but just you know, in terms of emotions, what do you think it'll be like? Um, it's exciting to get back out there to California. Um, I mean, it's pretty hard, pretty far from here in Texas, and it was far from where I grew up in Atlanta. So it's good to get back across the country and play on the West Coast. Um, but I mean, I'm excited, to, but. When it comes down to it, it's just like any other game, any other like week, any other um, we're preparing the same. Brooks? And they, they have oh, – I just have one follow. They, just, they have Nick Bosa on the other side of the line of scrimmage. Uh, what are some of the special things that you do when they have a pass rusher that's as good as Nick to face against? Thank you. Um, big thing is just um, knowing where he's at on the field, um, being able to mix up the cadence um, so he can't get a jump on our offensive lineman and beat him off the ball. And then also we have just like protections, protection stuff where we can um, get a little help to our tackles if he's coming off the edge too fast. So we'll be able to figure it out that way. We'll go to Brooks. You mentioned the Bay Area and how it was far from home. I mean, going from Georgia to California, what was that, you know, jump like and then adapting to that out there? Um, it was cool. Obviously the weather and the campus out there is beautiful. So um wasn't really missing the heat from back in Georgia. Um, but the biggest thing, I mean, my family flew out as much as they could to come see me when we were playing. And, I mean, I tried to get back as much as I could when we had an off weekend or extended break. Um, but, I mean, 
when it came down to it, I felt Stanford was the best fit. And it didn't really matter where it was in the country because I felt, I mean, it's the best school in the country. So going out there was an awesome experience and it's exciting to go back um, to the area this weekend. And, uh, you know, I think it was after your first start against the Panthers, we were talking about fourth downs on the field and you, you said you thought you needed to make a few more plays before you could, you know, advocate for maybe going for it. And in the time since, how how much do you sense in yourself a command in the offense and your voice in the film room and the game plan meetings and such? Um, it's definitely grown. Obviously, the coaches are still the ones out there um, calling the plays, and I'm just echoing it to the team and um, making audibles or changes at the line if needed within the within the scheme. Um, but I mean, I think the most growth in that realm, in that regard is just my knowledge of the offense, being able to go out there and play fast rather than having to hear a play call and then try to picture it in my head, think of what what step drop I have, things things like that. So I'm just able to go out there and play faster, and um, I guess that leads to better execution. Mark Berman. Davis, have you noticed anything maybe different about the atmosphere with the team, uh, the fact you guys are officially on a winning streak and going for number three in a row on Sunday? Anything along those lines? Yeah, I mean, obviously, winning's a lot better than losing. So um, I guess there's just a morale in the locker room that everyone's um, excited to keep this win streak alive, keep uh, going and attacking each week with that um, relentless attitude. Cole Thompson. Hey, Davis, just uh, two parts real fast. Number one, when you were going through the NFL Combine and going through the draft process, were you ever contacted by Kyle and John? Um, no, I actually wasn't. Okay. And then uh, number two, when you kind of look at the pass rush from San Francisco, they also have really good linebacker plays, starting off with Fred Warner. How do you prepare for a guy like that who is sideline to sideline, can make a lot of plays in coverage, and can also blitz? Um, a lot of it, like with Bosa, just knowing where they're at on the field. And then a lot of it um, is with scheme. We're able to do some stuff with backfield actions, play actions, and um, just make a lot of things look similar but end up in a different result or a different play. So just keep those guys guessing as much as possible so that we can slow them down. Aaron Wilson. Hey, Davis. What was it like to get Brandon Cooks and so many other players back at practice today, but in particular Brandon, who you – built some timing and chemistry with connected for some touchdowns uh, just to get him back in the lineup. I mean, it'll be exciting to have him back. Obviously Brandon was back. Justin Britt was back and a bunch of others. Um, I mean, it's kind of the team's coming back together and everyone's excited to attack it moving forward. Thank you. We'll take a couple more Brooks. And he what what are your I mean you spent a lot of your time on Stanford uh, you, you were injured a couple of times I mean working through that I mean what are your biggest memories from that and wondering if you'd get your shot like you do today I mean how how did you how did you work through that and your memories there for that Yeah I mean really I got hurt um, senior year of high school and then again freshman year at Stanford so I was pretty much um, and like when you're injured you're going through the rehab um, process and you're not really out there practicing with the team every day so I was away from football for um at a elongated period of time and it really just gave me the the time to think why am I out here at Stanford why am I why am I playing football and ultimately led to my um conclusion of just football is the thing I want to do for my future I love playing and this is what I want to spend the rest of my life doing um if I'm willing to or able to do that so it just allowed me to come to that conclusion and then ultimately just uh, realize that I just got to put my head down and get to work and eventually my opportunity will come and I'll have to take advantage of it. Was there a moment when that clicked, that answer? Pretty shortly after I got hurt that second time. Um, I mean, it was within probably the, the week following before surgery. I realized, I was like, okay, what what's the next step? Um, I was a, always a logical thinker, so... I was like, okay, what, what's my future going to look like and how, how can I make what I want to happen? And one more if I could. I mean, you, they, so many of the players were talking about how they could get here and you're already here in the morning. Uh, David Colley talked about how, how you approach film study. Like how 
how early do you get here and how have you attacked that to try and learn? He called you curious. Yeah, I mean, the biggest thing is just setting that routine from early on. That was a big thing the uh, Impact team talked about um, when we got here as rookies um, during rookie mini camp. It was kind of find your way and become what everyone says, like a pro's pro. And that was my way of doing it. Like try to be as a quarterback, be one of the first guys in the building um, and be one of the last ones out and just be scheduled and film study, um, taking care of my body, um, staying on like pretty good diet, like eating healthy, eating the right things. And I mean, it, it led us this far and I mean, it's been working, working obviously the past two weeks. So we just got to keep, keep it rolling. All right, last two questions, Aaron Reese. Hey Davis, you have uh, you obviously were just talking about the the injuries you had in, in college and stuff, and that how that sidelined you. Did you uh, when you were debating whether to go pro and, and whatnot? Did you think there was more you maybe could build on staying in college, or did you feel like kind of whatever still was untapped there for you? You kind of needed the, just the challenge of the, the next level to get to it. Yeah, I mean, I thought about going back to school, but I mean, there were a lot of uncertainties at the time with um, COVID protocols, especially out in California, Santa Clara County. I think the 49ers had similar um, protocols that they had, um, that we had at Stanford, where basically if you left the state and came back, you'd have to quarantine for two weeks and stuff like that. So I didn't even know if I'd get a full spring ball or an off season to train and um, keep getting better. And ultimate, ultimately, I felt like I had enough on tape to give myself a shot um, for a team to take a chance on me. And I ended up in Houston, and here we are. Last question, Jerry McDonald. And Davis, I'm curious whether or not you had a chance to meet the uh, other quarterbacks that were drafted. And do you feel a kinship at all with guys in your draft cast like Trey Lance and Zach Wilson and Trevor Lawrence? Do you pay attention to what they're doing and and sort of and compare yourself against them? Um, to answer the first part, I've met a couple of them. Like I trained with Mac Jones down in Mobile for combine training. Um, I knew Trevor a little bit growing up, but really haven't met the other guys other than um, the ones I kind of ran into a little bit and camps growing up in high school. But, um, yeah, I like to keep up to date with how the, the guys across the league are doing, not just rookies, but just other quarterbacks across the league and see, see how everyone plays each week and, um, kind of go back and in the off season, watch some different guys on film and see if I can pull some things from other people's games and add it to my own to uh, make myself better. Hi, right, Davis. Thank you. Thanks.